Ага. Ограбленный. Welcome to the company of women presenting to you today the Beauty from Ashes TV program. We've got a lot of exciting news for you today. There have been some changes, as you know, this past week, and for those of you who have not been as mindful of it or aware of it as perhaps we are or that I have been, but the Lord has just been talking to me a great deal about His glory and the end times and the things that are happening and to be aware of how he is moving in the spirit realm over the different nations, the different people, the attitudes, um, the morality in the nations. And truly, um, I think all of you are aware of the morality of this nation and wondering just exactly where we're gonna end up. But I promise you, God hadn't taken his hand off this nation by mm -hmm. any means, and he's got some surprises waiting for you. And I, this week I have felt that the Lord has been calling my attention to be aware of him so much that we are seeing him. We're seeing the results of his presence, whether you see him manifested in the spirit or, or but you, you just are aware that the whole atmosphere has the spirit presence of the Lord in it. And if you have not been, I want to call your attention to it. Um, I'm going to read you some scripture that I think will certainly tell you where you should be and what the Lord thinks about you. This is in Ephesians chapter 3, in the Amplified Version of the Bible. Uh, verse 16, it starts with, he says, May he, and this is Paul writing, he says, May he grant you, that means you, you're listening to me. It means each and every one of us, even those who don't believe that God even exists, it still means them. May he grant you out of the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power. And when you accept the Lord and believe the Lord, then this you're going to come to know. If you keep denying the Lord and walk away from him, then you're denying all that he's telling you is yours. So pay attention. May he grant you out of the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. May Christ, through your faith, now realize Paul is praying for the believers in that time in Ephesus, but this prayer is resonating over all the world and over all of us who pay attention to it. it said, may Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, and make his permanent home in your hearts. And this is what Christ does when we invite him to come and take over our lives we have a new birth because we are then born spiritually into Christ and he gives us the Holy Spirit. It's his spirit that God gave to us when Christ was crucified. When you stop and realize that you've got Christ living in you, that's not you anymore. Mm -hmm. That old you is dead. You might as well accept it. You don't know what it means, but it'll work out and the Spirit of God in you will work it out. You don't have to do that. Just stay focused on Him. He goes on and he says, May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. And that would be His love for us, not ours for Him. It's that you may have the power and be strong 
to apprehend and grasp with all the saints. These are God's devoted people. The experience of that love, and what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of God's love, that we may really come to know. I like that, really come to know. I'm going to tell you about some of the things I've come to know. Practically, through experience, <laughs> it was practically and through experience, I saw the Spirit of God manifested on you, young man. And I know that it was an answer to my question. And the question I had was, our Lord, your word keeps talking about your glory being upon your believers. And that as your believers live in this world and go in your place, that your glory will rest upon us and the world will see a light upon us which is your glory on us. It's a, he's, well, this is what he did for Adam. He was dressed in his glory mm -hmm. and Eve also. So, but that glory rests on us now so that the world sees the difference. And he makes reference to it as light and they can recognize the light, but they're not sure what it is. But here Paul is telling exactly what it is and that we, as believers, may really come to know practically through experience for ourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being. There you go. Filled through all your being. You were not even aware of it, and I saw it. Praise God that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, and you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. That's what we are supposed to be, and this is what God wants for us. So I'm going to do what I felt impressed to do, and that was to tell you of an incident that happened uh, with Rifle Scudder. And I guess maybe I need to introduce all of these young men again. <laughs> but most of all, I just want you to know Jesus. But this is Jay. Jay, I don't even remember your last name. <laughs> Coltrane. That's right, Coltrane. And that's my son's name. I told him, you know, mm. but he doesn't have gray hair. My son does. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And a rifle scuffer, scutter, whom you have known for now for a couple of years. And it always seems as if there ought to be an aura on your name, the way it is pronounced. Scutter. Say it out loud. Scutter. Scutter. No, you swallow it. You keep it close at hand. Speak it out. Scutter. Rifle scutter. Scutter. There you go. Perfect. There you go. You I see? still want to put an R yeah. on it. That's great. It's, it's a neat pronunciation. It took me a long time to get it, but <laughs> I've got it now. Well done. And then let me introduce you to Tim. <laughs> and you say your name. It's, it's Abramov. But your first name, the way it's supposed to be. Oh, uh, it's Artem Abramov. Artem, and it's A R T I M. T M, but sounds like I am. Oh, T M, okay. Tim, <laughs> it's fun getting to know them. And, and you know, maybe when I make enough mistakes, they feel perfectly at ease to go along with everything <laughs> that's happening. Um, I was gonna tell you something, though, wasn't it? I was gonna tell them about Saturday evening. The Cornelia group is a, a prayer gathering that's been going on for over 30 some years. Um, some of us have not been there that long, but at any rate, they had gotten Rifle to start sharing some of the teaching that he has. And the Lord has given him such revelation, and it is just beautiful. And Saturday evening, he was finishing up a lesson that he had started before. And when this was all over with, there was refreshments being served. And I saw, 
I saw the Holy Spirit on rifle, and I saw him go into this teaching and wrapped up in the Word of God, and it was such a delight and a joy. It was, and he even said that he, he was teaching one class one time, and he, he saw something, and the revelation came to him, so he started laughing, and they wanted to know what he was laughing at. And that was the one about the lamb. I think that's priceless. But I believe that it would be great for Rifle to do some of this teaching on our program because what he has received of the Lord, the revelation and the Holy Spirit's presence is something that you can catch. You can see it. And it was during the time of the refreshing, of the refreshment time, that he was talking with someone and I had been asking the Lord about the glory, the light being on the believers. And so this is how the Lord answered me. I saw his glory manifest on rifle. I was standing where it was profile and it was as if he, he was just lit up. Um, the light was coming from within him, not mm. on, out on him as if you put a spotlight. It was coming from within. It was the Word of God. It was the Spirit of God. And he just, I'm sitting there grinning like a Cheshire cat, you know, thinking, I want this. But I want to be able to get it on film because if you can see it, you can you can also get the spirit by way of, of the film on TV. You can you can pick it up. God is so loving, and He's just reaching out to everyone that He can. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And if you don't know in this day and time, you never will know it. But you better focus on it because now's the time to focus because it's getting short. But I wanted. And of course, it, Rifle didn't realize this was happening. And, and I, I so wanted to be able to share this with you. But all of you who have watched the program, you know now for 16 years we've been talking about the Lord and His love and His power and, and what He wants to do for us, but we've never, well, we've never manifested um, a miracle or anything like that for you to see. So, be prepared. We're changing things. I'm asking Rifle to come and take over this program and be the host for it with the support of his church. And these two boys are in the church. He went out and got them and brought them in. <laughs> mm. Didn't he? Yes, he did. And so, it's going to fall on their shoulders and it's going to be their revelation from the Lord as to what the Lord wants for you to see on a regular filming basis. And so if you have been aware for the last year or so, I've tried to do things in a sequence with like four shows that would be talking about the same thing, trying to make a continuity to it. At one time when we started, we were just introducing you to people that had been on an ash heap and God had blessed them and raised them up. That's the beauty from ashes that he named. But this now is a time to bring you abreast of the days in which we live. This is the end of the age. It's a time when Jesus is going to return for those the church that is to be his bride. And we've gone so lackadaisical uh, the last few years that I have just wondered where and what had happened. There is such a change as to what it was when I was coming along. But I don't want any of you, Jay and Tim and others, and Rifle knows it, but there are others such as you, and even those that are much older, I'm, I regret to say this, there are those who are as old as I am and older, and they don't realize the beauty that the Lord has for them. They are 
like I was before I received the baptismal of the Holy Spirit with the Spirit living inside and making a difference. We believed in Jesus, but that's as far as it went, you know. And all the reading of the Word, it, it, it did not, it didn't have the meaning that it has when the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit just opens you up and you have so much love and you just can't get enough of that Word that's right. because that's, that's, right. that's Jesus' Spirit. Yes. And so what we need to be sure to do, in my mind, and if you agree, and if the Lord gives revelation of agreement, that we are, <laughs> we are to, to teach others how to receive the Holy Spirit and receive this love that He wants mm -hmm. them to have. Because without that love and, and the awareness that God loves them so much, and this is what He's doing, eliminating all the requirements for umpteen years that I was taught I had to do, it was always I had to do something, that God would do this if I did that. Well, that is the biggest lie that ever came along, and it, I'm, I'm out to tell everybody it's wrong. If you don't do anything but just sit on your duff mm -hmm. and you talk to Him, He loves you. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you what's coming next. Mm -hmm. And all you've got to do is be still and be quiet and listen. He's talking all the time, and we're not listening. And it's to a point now that it's like, that's all I want to do. I want to listen. And then I find that <laughs> I get so far out there, I can't get back and tell others what I'm hearing. <laughs> but it, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience, a wonderful life. And I want each and every one of you who hear to invite Jesus to come and do in your life, make your life whatever He might want to do. And you experience this. You've done what you could all you can. Now it's time to allow Him. And what have you got to lose? Only something to gain. And you will begin to see the glory and the love manifest on someone as I saw on Rifle. Now each of, each of these, all of us can have this. And so you just make me green with envy because I loved it. I thought, now I see what it's like. I can't see me, but that's okay. I know I believed it all along and he proved it to me. And let me tell you, God will do that. Right? Yes. He did it to you, didn't he? Yes, he did. Tell us about it. Um, you know, when I first, when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. my voice is a little hoarse because I've been yelling and screaming in, in my apartment with the Lord. But <laughs> well, you don't just have to yell and scream. Yeah, I just I got to do it. <laughs> but um, when I first was taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence that comes with it, you know, at first I was kind of like, you know, I want to say I was blasé. I wasn't. You know, I wasn't hunger to experience in the, in the man of God that the Lord had placed in my life at that time. He had challenged me. He said, look, he said, if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is easy as getting a cup of water. This is what he told me. And he said, you got feel yet? And I would say, well, I don't know. And he was like, when you get filled, you will know. <laughs> and, you know, he said something that really challenged me. You know, the Bible says, let us provoke one another in love that we may do a good work. Mm -hmm. So once he had provoked me, I just really started getting in the Word, spending time in the Word. You know, our Tim would tell you, I would just read Acts 2, 4 for days and days mm -hmm. straight. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was in my cell and I was just worshiping the Lord. And, you know, I'm, I'm just now really coming to the phase of experiencing and practicing the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that, the Lord said, what do you want? And I said, fill me. And once I said that, oh, it just came out <laughs> and okay. it rocked my world. Like when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my life changed. Like 
it's like it's like everything that I look at now in the word, I can is I get a better understanding. I started hearing the voice of God, and it just really changed my whole the whole dynamics of my lifestyle as being because a Christian. Because you were a totally new person. You were born again and born into the Spirit. You were no longer just a fleshly human being, a carnal nature. You allowed the Lord to baptize you and Man. elevate you into the Spirit of God. Yes. And it's a whole different realm. You see what I'm talking about? This, this is, we just have to experience it, don't we? You must experience it. Mm -hmm. And once I had experienced it, you can't know, shut you up. Okay. <laughs> no, really, you can't. Yeah, that's why you're hoarse, because you've been just worshiping and praising the Lord. <laughs> and me and our Tim would run around in the prison on the yards, <laughs> and we would share what we learned about the baptism, and people would receive it, and they would get filled. <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was just, it was amazing. It must have been, how many men were, or people, yeah, men, were in that, that prison and that you shared with, and if they all caught on, that would have been a sight to see out there on the grounds, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. There was, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of men that are incarcerated, and a lot of them are hungry for, for something, and mm -hmm. that something is God. And so once, once God, once God filled us and really changed us, <laughs> and it showed us you know, some of these things that it was available to everybody. Yeah. That he wanted everybody to know that what you were reading, the, you know, the, how wide and deep his love is. We would just go out and, and share that same thing. And I mean, just not to be careless, maybe at least 30, 40, 50 men, maybe throughout a few years yeah. that we can, we can remember of different ways and different times where we sat down and went over the word. God said, listen, Whosoever will ask, I'll, I'll give the Spirit. I'll, right. I'll give you know healing and wholeness. And you so, said something. I want you to repeat it, just to be sure that everybody catches it. You said something about asking. Right. Can anyone t say that again? Right. In Luke chapter eleven, um, Jesus says, um, "Ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it will be given." Now, you, God's just not going to run you down and plock it on you. You have got to want to see this enough that you will ask Him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit or to ask Him to come and live within you. And when you ask, then you can be sure that He is going to answer you and you will know that it is yours. And we've just got five minutes now to be able to tell you how to do it before we go into another program in which to, to carry on further. So, um, Tim, mm -hmm. our, our Tim, mm -hmm. our Tim. That's it. Okay, <laughs> we'll get there. Go on from there. Okay, so uh, the rest of the verse sounds like this. He says, um, uh, you, you know, natural human people, when your son, when a son asks a father, for bread, for food, he won't give him a stone, he won't give him a scorpion, he won't give him something mm -hmm. that will harm him. He won't give him something that's false. And so likewise, he says, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Spirit to them that ask him? And so that's simply what we did. We just saw what the Word said, and we asked God to give us of his Spirit, to give us of his goodness and of his fullness. And guess what? He did. Mm -hmm. And not only in our lives, he reproduced that over and over and over again in men's lives, in prison, on the streets, everywhere. And so that's, that's kind of the heart of our message and kind of what you were talking about mm -hmm. at the beginning, that God wants this for all. He wants none to perish. Mm -hmm. But it's not even so much that. He, he has so much goodness and so mm -hmm. much love that's available, and it's at the taking. And He wants it for a practical experience. He wants you to experience it as you two did. Absolutely. He, it's not just a matter of taking His word for it, but it's, it, it actually happens. Right. That's right. Right. The big thing but that he's separates, the one doing it, isn't He? Yeah, the big thing that separated for a lot of men were um, there's a lot of different religions in the prisons and everywhere. And uh, the thing that really separates Christianity is the God of the Bible says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. He calls you into an encounter and experience. 
And that's really what rocked our world. That's really what changes us. It's not so much do doctrine and religious ceremony and practice and bow here and pray this and do that and good works. No, it was an encounter that God is, is opening to us. Like we see the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9, the thing that changed his life wasn't some religious dogma. Mm -hmm. It was an encounter with the risen Christ. Amen. Oh, Rifle, we've got about two minutes left. Can you just put a prayer on top of that for mm -hmm. everybody so sure. that they can That's receive what we've been talking about? Sure. Um, let's just close our eyes. You don't even, even have to close your eyes, but no. let's just come to the Lord. He is there exactly where you are, sitting in the room where you are right now. He's there. He was there before you arrived in that room. And He's a good Father. He has a, a perfect plan for your life. Yes. He's a good Dad. And, and so many things have been blamed on Him, and therefore so many people can't trust Him. But He's good. He's a good Father. We just pray now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your love would be revealed, that people would know that Jesus really came. That's how your word says your love was revealed already to us, that Christ came and gave himself for us. So we just pray that everyone who's hearing and listening to this program now, that they would open themselves to the love of God. And that they would, as, as we said, that they would ask and say, Lord, come and change my life. Come and make yourself the Lord and the King of my life. I give up the reins, I give up the decision making, I give up, Lord, my lordship over myself and I, I hand that to you because Jesus is Lord. He came, he rules and reigns over death, he's seated in majesty on high and he wants all his children to have a good and a fulfilled life. So where you are, just open your heart now and just say, Jesus, come in and take my life, I give it to you now. That's the only way that we can get involved with our fathers if we want to. And we give him the right because he is Lord. So we pray this, Lord. We thank you for your love and your kindness towards us. We bless every person that's listening to this program and praying this prayer right now. And your word says, Lord, if we ask anything in the name of Jesus, it will be done unto us. So this prayer, we don't pray out of ourselves. We don't pray it because of religion, we, we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that because we prayed in Jesus' name, we will have what we have asked. And we bless you and we love you and we thank you for this. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And we thank you for being with us today. Take to heart what we said. We'll see you next week.